just wanted to show you real quick what I was doing with the bedroom furniture. This is actually a bed that I bought on Facebook for only $50, and it is actually a four-posted bed. So this is the headboard that looks really crappy right now because I just sprayed it with the first coat of white paint, and it's actually white chalk spray paint. So it's chalk, like chalk paint, but it's in the spray can version. And it wasn't that much, really, for having that availability, you know, to be able to do it that way. So I go, went ahead and used one can on the first coat of the headboard and the two side rail um, pieces. And then over here, we still have the footboard. And then these are the post extensions. There's two there, two here, and then we have the three supports that go underneath the box spring. And so I'm gonna about, about to bust out another can and hit, no, I'm, I might wait for this, and I'm gonna bust down another can and hit the other pieces. And then maybe a few hours, I need to read the can to see how long I need to wait for the second coat. But before I did all of that, I washed everything down with a liquid soap solution. This actually came out of a house where there was many, many, many cats. I am allergic to cats. Uh, but beyond that, there was also a kind of a smell going on with it. Sort of like, lot, just lots of potpourri from many years. It kind of had that kind of uh, smell and, and I just it just didn't sit right with me so hopefully all I smell after this is just paint I'd rather smell paint than what I smelled before so yep gotta put another coat on probably I have three more cans I think of this paint or maybe more let me see we'll go in real quick I don't know if I ever mentioned this I bought these also on Facebook these are two eight-foot boards and they have that plasticky kind of a coating on them well I'm gonna have to rip them down into half of this because I bought some metal supports to allow these to be hung on my pegboard walls in the booth but because you know these are like 16 inches or so deep that's much too long or much too deep for any support hooks to be for this to hang on a wall so I'm going to rip them down. That'll give me four shelves of eight feet by around seven and a half inches deep. And those will go in the booth to help give me some more permanent solutions for displaying things. So, so yes, that was a thing. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So I actually did get some of this here. Howard's Feed and Wax. It was recommended by a subscriber. So I will definitely use that for my wood items. Here's some hooks that I bought on Amazon. There are 50 hooks in here and it was only, it was like $13 or something. It was really a great deal. They're not the like most industrial type hook, but I'm going to put one of these every 12 inches and that'll really help support that. But as you can see, it's not as deep, you know, as this, I think it's about an eight, an eight inch hook here. So they just don't make anything really larger than around eight inches. And if they do, it's very industrial, very expensive. So there's 50 of those. Here's actually the paint that I used. And I have three cans left. So one more can is going to coat the first coat of the other two pieces. And then I think with the other two cans, that should be enough to, get, to do the second coat and, you know, give it real full coverage. But this is Rust-Oleum chalked ultra matte paint chiffon cream i was all i was almost going to get their like really really white paint uh but the review said that it was way too white whatever that means so i trusted that and i just went ahead with the chiffon cream and i seen this cap and i was really kind of scared at first because i really did not want it to come across as like a real antique color that may sound strange but I haven't even explained i think what i'm doing in the bedroom and that's okay well what i'm going to do in the bedroom is kind of a 1940s solarium sort of vibe. And a solarium is basically a greenhouse. And the inspiration, believe it or not, comes from a Stephen King movie called Rose Red. And there is a really beautiful solarium in that movie that comes alive at one point in the, literally, in the, in the film. So it, you know, becomes green and luscious and everything. And that's what I want it to kind of feel like. And it has that antique vibe to it. So this four post bed is going to help brighten up the space a little bit and help contrast that waterfall furniture that I currently have in there. It is much, I think it's a little hard to find a queen size waterfall bed 
So I sort of went a different direction with the bed. Now for the nightstands, because I am, oh, I don't know if I mentioned that. I'm, I sold the current bedroom set that I had in there. So I sold the dresser, the bed, the two matching nightstands, and I sold that for about $425. Well, not about, $425. And they're supposed to actually pick that up today. So sold that. He actually already came and paid me the cash, I guess, to reserve it or whatever. And so I got the cash. He just needs to come and pick it up. So the bedroom set sold. That means I have the two waterfall pieces uh, and the the thing that you put things in, um, cedar chest. So that'll be at the foot of the bed. So we'll have a nice contrast. Okay, for the nightstands, I'm actually wanting to do white wicker. And that also plays into this solarium vibe. Uh, for the background or the back wall, just behind the bed, I picked out some really cool wallpaper. I know, kind of scary. I have never done wallpaper. And in fact, when we moved into this house, there was wallpaper all up on these walls here, all down there in the bathroom. So I we pulled all that off. <laughs> and, and yeah, in the bathroom as well. And I pulled all that off thinking, oh, wallpaper terrible and now I'm thinking oh wow wallpaper cool <laughs> so I bought some really cool on sale wallpaper and I think the website's called goingdecor.com and it has a really nice selection of wallpaper um, so these are kind of it's kind of a vintage inspired type look so it has bas basically big uh, tropical palm leaves on it uh, think if you know golden girls Blanche Devereaux's room her wall her wall behind her but not as like green, like not that intense. It's pretty much, but you know. So that's kind of the idea we're going for. I think it'll come together pretty nicely once I get all the different variables involved, which would be the nightstands. And I gotta find those, I gotta look for them. Um, and preferably would like two nightstands that match and both have drawers. Might be kind of tr uh, tricky to find that. Would also love to find, just throwing this out here, you know those really old wicker, chairs with like the rounded backs they kind of go like rounded and then there's like lots of like uh wicker detailing in it they're just really pretty um would love to find a chair like that but they kind of have like a a real interesting you can't even see a real interesting rounded off kind of in it yeah well love to find that that would make a great accent for the other side of the room to help bring those pieces together but uh really excited about it painting i feel like i'm going on and on i'm painting that bed right now and um because currently don't currently we don't have a bed our mattress is on the floor uh so i mean whatever but it kind of is more incentive to get going on it i guess so yes i will um check back in late actually let's just keep on going so this morning i went to the place that i go to on Thursdays. Today's Thursday, by the way. And I went there and this was literally the only thing I could find. It was pretty awful. I uh, almost didn't make it in. I, I forgot completely about it, but I got in there and this was literally the only thing. It's a terrible little scale. I mean, there's a bobby pin and I, <laughs> there's a bobby pin as the dial. So I didn't notice that. I don't know why. I mean, shoot, $4. This is going to go in the booth and hopefully I can get 10 to $12 out of it. Scales are popular regardless, but um, that was just silly. Silly, silly. So somebody asked me, how do you change out the, I'm all over the place today, I swear. Um, don't look over there. That's a different haul that I haven't got to yet. So I have these in line, ready to be retrofitted with new clock mechanisms these are the existing ones they don't work of course i said that you have to have a master clock to run them these are known as slave clocks because they all uh, follow and match the time of the master clock so these would be in a, uh, a school or a industrial work setting something like that and you'd have all these clocks all over the building and they would all be wired together so that they kept time with each other and so to get these to work independently, you have to basically switch out the entire mechanism. And that's easier said, or it's easier than you think, really, because uh, once you take this out, you're just left with a hole in this metal plate here where you can, and the hole is just, you know, right in there, a little hole, and that's where you insert the new shaft of the new quartz clock mechanism. And so that's what I was showing you over here. 
is that I got these new quartz, quartz, quartz clock movements on Amazon. These were, I don't know, $8 a piece or something like that. And they come with hands. So they're actually extra long hands. This is known as a high torque, does it say that? This is a high torque, tor a high torque movement. And high torque means that there's more power in that driver there to help move these hands. And you need that whenever you have extra long hands. Now, I, um, these are a thin metal made of like a type of aluminum and they are a little bit longer than needed. So all I do is just cut them off. I cut off the extra metal that they don't need. But that shows you there on the back how to assemble it. There you go. Really simple. Um, here's the existing metal plate. There's the number dial that sets over that. Here's your new mechanism that goes through, a little washer that goes through that. And then your uh, another washer, a bolt, and then your two hands get put on top of that. This third hand here, number eight, I'm not sure why that's shown because this does not have a second hand. It's just the hour and minute. But uh, that's it, really simple. So while I'm over here though, I'll show you some things that I've been neglecting to show before. I went to an antique mall the other day and I found this really cool uh, 1950s metal, I wanna call it a spice rack, it probably is that. But I thought it would be really cute for salt and pepper display in my booth. I paid $11 for it. It's not in the best of shape, but I've never seen one of these before, so I had to grab it. And it's just one of those cool pieces that'll help um, intensify the vibe, I guess. I also went to Goodwill at some point, don't remember now because it's been a while, and these were only a dollar. They are salt and pepper shakers of lighthouses. These will go great in the booth. I'll put maybe $4 on them or maybe five uh, because they are, are, are themed so well. I will take them out of this packaging um, because they were only sold originally for $2.50, but we'll see what I can do as far as getting more than that. Yeah. Um, this here, we have a dollar on it. It's a nice little fish thing. Uh, fish decor, great for the booth, nautical theme. And I also bought this thing of pillar candles here because they were only $2 at Goodwill. And I thought that with pillar candles, they would come in handy for these little things here. They are, oh shoot, pooty, P-U-T-T-I. Someone told me in, in one of those videos. It's not technically a cherub or anything like that. It's a pooty. P-U-T-T-I. And so I thought they would they would show better with candles in them. So I went ahead and bought these candles and they'll come in handy for future endeavors as well. But really cool. I think I might need to cut them down a little bit. Maybe cut that off and figure it out. But regardless, really cool and very fun. Also got these little American flag things at the same Goodwill. They are popcorn decorations. I love picking them up. However, flags... When am I ever going to use these? I don't decorate for anything like that. I barely decorate for any other holiday. But they were a dollar a piece. I might end up selling these because I don't need them. But I do keep the ones that are Halloween themed. And depends on the Christmas one, how, how it looks. And I'll probably keep those as well. I had a very busy day at the 10 Pin Antique Mall today where I have two antique booths. I actually captured a little bit of footage of the booths after I got done with them and it took me about four, about four hours to get through all of this. But essentially what I did was I put two shelves on each of the walls in the first and primary booth and then I rearranged some furniture in order for that to work out. So as you can see in this clip right here, there are two flanking shelves on each side of the booth and they are this this white pressed particle board stuff with this white coating on top so they really help items stand out and that way things are, are more likely to sell let's just put it that way i also put things that were white or lighter in color on the two black shelves that are in the back of the booth on either side of the center uh big white cabinet thing and then also in the other booth, we just kind of moved things, I say we, me, I just moved things around and I imported the new curio cabinet into that booth as well. So all in all, things are just looking so much better in the two booths and I can fit a lot more items in there without having to get another booth. So I'm pretty happy with the way that it turned out today. It was very exhausting, but 
Um, I have a ritual every time I go to the booth. Well, not every time, but only whenever I feel like I really just earned it, I go to a Chinese buffet. And I went there and I was just very happy because there was only one other table there in use. So I was practically alone and I loved it. I just love eating alone. No, that sounds really depressing. But I like going to restaurants and not having people stare at you. That's great. So I thought I'd touch a little bit on the Disney trip that's up and coming. It is going to be on October 1st, I think. First, I think we're leaving the first. Yeah, that's right. We're leaving the first and it's the second, third, fourth, fifth, I don't know. And so I added another day to it so that we can have a little bit more time because we had a huge ordeal, a huge issue with the, the fact that the plane uh, was going to be going out at 5 a.m. or something like that. Yeah, 5 a.m. And then we had to leave Disney property three hours prior to that in order to, uh, well, you need to be at the airport early. I'm a first time flyer. I mean, I don't know these things. So uh, yeah, completely my mistake. But so I don't know if I mentioned any of this. Did I mention, I don't know. I forget things like that. But I had to basically cancel the original flight that we had or the original airline, they were being complete poo-poos about it. I mean, Delta, well, all of them, I'm not gonna call them out, but all airlines just are, ugh. So Delta would not change, my phone is dying, why? Okay, which reminds me, I got a battery backup thing, so when we're at Disney, I can charge it while it's in my pocket. Assuming it doesn't explode in my pocket, that'd be terrible. But I got a battery backup thing that'll charge it. Uh, so what were we talking about? I got a new airline because they would not, Delta would not change the flight. Uh, actually they would, or could they? I don't know, but they wanted to charge me $200 per something or other. It was gonna be like $400 and our whole flight was really only $480. So <laughs> it was like just $80 shy of a whole new ticket. So what we did is instead of dealing with Delta, in fact, I don't even think Delta had another flight that could be switched to that would be um, good. So we switched to Frontier, which is another airline, thus canceling Delta's airline tickets. So we recouped $80 of our original $480. Oh, I hate, I hate that. Um, so then we went with Frontier Airlines. Their tickets were actually cheaper out just flat out, just cheaper than Delta. So I wish I would have known that, but I was booking, booking this all through Disney's website, thinking that it was the most easiest, the most, I was telling myself, hey, don't even worry, just d d live it up. Don't, don't, don't obsess about prices. You know, you always do that. This is a vacation, you're not supposed to worry about price or, or even, ugh. So yeah, I mean, I should have worried about price. Um, I was just going with the flow. In my mind, it was one of those things where I can talk myself out of just about anything that costs money. So when it comes to a trip with Disney and just vacations in general, the way I looked at it was that if, if I overthink this, we're probably not gonna go anywhere. So I just pushed that thing through. I mean, I did my homework ahead of time, but you know, throughout the checking pro checkout process, I wasn't sitting there cost comparing the flights or anything like that. It was all rolled in together. I thought, oh, $480 for two people round trip, pretty good. Yeah, well, not as good as it could have been. So we are going with Frontier instead of Delta. So either way, what that did and what that enabled us to do is add another day to the trip. So I also had to add another day for our hotel, which is on Disney property, but we don't have a ticket anywhere for that particular day. We just have a four day ticket, single tickets. They are not park hopper. We're not trying to be like that. We're gonna do one park per day and hopefully it works. Another big thing that happened, I was trying to find the right word. Another big development is that I added a special event ticket for Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party and I didn't ever plan that. I had no clue. I am such a Disney noob. I have no clue anything about Disney. And that just is my stupidity. And they are really making a lot of money off of me, it seems like. I don't like that. So 
our first day at Disney on Disney property, or I mean our first park day is the Magic Kingdom. I was so happy to have that. I was like, we need to have Magic Kingdom day one. But I did not check the hours. I just assumed every day had the same hours, except in, in exception for extra magic hours. I did know about that, but I still didn't care about extra magic hours. I said, eh, I want first day, day number one to be Disney uh, Magic Kingdom, Magic Kingdom. So I did that. I didn't check anything else. I didn't even know what a special event was. Well, turns out the 2nd of October happens to be a Halloween party date. What that means is if you do not leave the, well, you have to leave the park at 6 p.m. That's the end of the day, sayonara. And it's a full ticket price. So you're paying as much as any other day, but yet you have to leave at six. I was really annoyed whenever I found out about that. And I thought, oh, this is Disney we're dealing with. I'll just tell them I had no idea. And they'll just make it all magically correct for me. And just, they'll just say, oh, don't you worry. You can go to the party. <laughs> No, they're in the, uh, they're in the business of making money, actually, not just making dreams come true. Did you know that? I, I'm so naive, but, um, I really let it hurt me. No, I didn't. I was really annoyed with it for many weeks until I just was watching YouTube and all these people talking about Mickey's not so scary Halloween party. And I like Halloween a lot. I mean, it's one of my favorite holidays. Don't know why. It's just that kind of a cool a uh, different ho holiday. I mean, I don't know. But regardless, irrelevant. I'm just telling you, I was starting to feel like I was gonna be left out. Like our trip wasn't gonna be everything that it could be. And that I knew when I'm in Magic Kingdom on October the 2nd, I'm gonna be walking around all day saying, oh, I should have got that ticket. I sh I'm so mad because they're gonna go up. It's a hard ticketed event. Not only will the prices go up, closer you get, I think, they'll also sell out. There is a hard cutoff number. They don't let, I mean, it, it's smaller crowds. That's the idea and the appeal. My arm is getting tired. But other than that, there also is other things that, that's much better, but I'm not left-handed. But there's other things that are more enticing about the whole Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, and that is they have the parade. I wouldn't have had a parade if I did not have the hard ticketed event or the special event ticket. I wouldn't have had a parade. I don't know if they have fireworks. I think they do have fireworks. I wouldn't have had fireworks either. I would have had to try to find them on another night or something. And I don't know how that would have worked. It wouldn't have. So I was going to miss out on two nighttime festivities. And then as I was researching Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, I realized that they had another thing that was really just awesome. And that is their like stage show. I think it's, I forgot what it's called, but it has the Sanderson sisters from Hocus Pocus, one of my favorite Halloween movies, by the way. And it has them primarily on stage doing their thing. I wish I knew what the name of that thing was. I knew it at one point. And there's other like villains and villainess. I don't know. Other villain people, um, on stage doing this whole thing too. And so it's a whole orchestration and there is candy that they give out too, but I don't care about that. And, but the main draw for this whole party is that it's going to be smaller crowds and you have this whole Halloween, Halloween themed thing going on at night with the orange lights and all that stuff. So I was feeling pretty left out, starting to feel left out. And I, the prices of this stuff, it was another, um, what was it? $90 per person. And you get to go in, technically, if you don't have a daytime ticket, you can go in at 4 p.m. and it lasts till midnight, midnight. Mm -hmm. But if you do not, if you have a regular ticket, you just stay all day, really. Um, so, I think it's like, I don't know what time it is, 9 a.m., sure, who knows. So 9 a.m. to probably midnight. I don't know if we're gonna make it till midnight, but the point is we're gonna be able to partake in those things now. And that is pretty, I'm pretty happy that I went through with it. I was annoyed at first, of course, because you just don't think about stuff like that. But so that's sort of the development as far as like changes in our trip is concerned. It's just becoming more expensive. Ironic, right? So. We got that figured out. I don't know if there's any other things. So yeah, we changed the flight completely. We added another day to it. Um, so the end of their trip is a little bit more relaxing, if, if that's a word that could be used for this really intense trip. I mean, not intense. We're gonna have four full days 
walking every day back to back at a park. I'm just not used to that. So, you know, by the end of the trip, we're gonna be pretty, I think pretty spent. So we have, I think our last day there, we're gonna go to and, and really take advantage of Disney Springs, which is not a park. It's sort of just like a, uh, I don't know what you'd call it. It's mostly kind of like a tourist attraction, but anybody can go. It's on Disney property. It has like restaurants mostly. Um, it's just atmospherically Disney, but no rides or anything like that. So there's restaurants and like little boutique shops, like the bougie kind, expensive stuff that I don't, I don't shop at. I barely shop anywhere. But uh, so that is gonna be interesting to do. I think I even scheduled another restaurant for that night in Disney Springs, you know, just to take advantage of the fact that we've got that extra day, we've got that park, that, not a park, it's a place. But um, I just wanted to give a little update on Disney and that is gonna be happening, like I said, in about three weeks, I guess it is from now. I don't know, I can't keep track. I will keep everyone informed on how I end up doing the bedroom with the wallpaper, that light, whoa. So I'll have that, it, I'll have that shipped to me, that wallpaper, and it'll be really fun to install that. Hopefully fun, I don't know. I've never installed wallpaper before. This could be a big mess, very big mess, but uh, hopefully it goes good. Uh, I have high hopes, I do. And so for the whole room, I really am excited to see it come together. The bed, I will also mention on the bed, Stella! She's being very naughty today. Stella. What was I talking about? The bed? The bed. I painted it with two coats. Well, basically, I ran out of paint. I ran out of spray paint. So, okay. Chalk spray paint is a good idea if you really just, okay. I don't like painting. I really don't like it. Uh, I just like to see things finished. I, I don't like the process. Who can relate? So I literally just sprayed the whole thing with coat number one and a half. Let's just call it that, one and a half. And it still looks pretty splotchy. So I bought two more cans and I'm gonna make it work with two more cans of the paint. Then I also bought a good old can of regular, like dip your brush in paint. Okay, so I'm gonna do sort of a mixture there of spraying what else I need to to get that flawless look. And then I'm gonna go in with a brush and do like a cross hatch over it uh, in, in areas that just really need it. Um, primarily in the little creases and things because you're gonna have to do that. Spray paint is not gonna get in those little holes. So uh, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm gonna do. And I'll just keep everyone in the loop as that prog process progresses. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the video right here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.